Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now, the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos has held that the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN regulation, which requires financial institutions to demand and collect the social media handles of their customers as part of the standard Know Your Customer procedure, is not a breach of the right to privacy. In June 2023, the Apex Bank issued a directive saying the aim is to prevent financial crime and terrorism as well as boost the precision and thoroughness of customer identification. The judge ruled that the providing a social media handle is equivalent to providing an email and phone numbers for potential customers and therefore it does not violate the rights to privacy now joining me to have a conversation is a human rights lawyer is justice Uwebu. good morning sir thank you for joining me it is my pleasure once more always all right so we're talking about you know being a bank customer you also have to provide your social media handle now i know what social media is because i mean it happened in my era and with social media that's where your daily activities are you you know post a story um on what maybe you've gone to a restaurant or you're somewhere you post that story so they can tell who you are sort of sometimes um from your social media handle based on what you post someone can just look at that and analyze your life or who that person is now i know that there's always that thing in nigeria whereby you have to know your customer you have to have an idea of who that person is and that's the reason why they ask for you know your email your email your phone number your address but having to know your social media handle now collect your social media handle isn't that you know like a you know breach of privacy isn't that an invasion in fact that's the word isn't that an invasion of privacy why do you have to know my social media? Why do you have to follow me on social media? Why do you have to know what my daily activity is? And that has to be your standard procedure for knowing your customer. You are um, a human rights lawyer. So I want you to just walk me through this. Isn't that too much for the CBN to know or for the banks to know about you? Isn't that invading my privacy just a little bit too much? Well, uh, for me, uh, truly speaking, I will tell you that um, uh, for me, I I like the judgment of the courts and I applaud it. Mm. And let us also understand that for me, uh, no right is absolute. It's even uh, even by our laws, no right is absolute. Mm. So there are curtailments of rights because if you allow every right to be absolute, people are bound to abuse it, just like the courts have. Uh, rightly said in this wisdom uh when you provide your email address phone number and what have you uh we do not say that is uh embedding on uh, someone's uh, privacy of uh of human violating the, the, the person's human right for me the answer is no and again uh looking at what is happening the era we are in the country now and in the world it is imperative that um uh, whenever whoever if I, whoever you're doing business with or whoever you are dealing with should be able to go further in order to know certain things about you to avoid fraud we're in the era of kidnapping assassination and robbery and all the rest so for me i do not see anything bad that having in mind that no right all over the world is absolute mm. Okay, so I, I mean, I, I understand the fact that you need to know your customer. I understand the fact that you need to have an idea. And I know that, in fact, in recent times, you would see, if someone is going for an interview, they probably still f want to have that information. They want to know your, your online presence. And that kind of like tells them who you are and who they're dealing with. Based off, they don't want to employ someone who might just be a kidnapper or a terrorist or something. But when it comes to, you know, the banks, I'm, I'm just wondering, is this data that they really need? Because it feels like every now and again, they come up with something. So either they're asking for your BVN or your NIN or something. And when we keep collecting all of this data, what are we really using them for? So I'm just wondering, it's not a bad idea to know, you know, who Nigerians are, especially if you're going to be a bank customer, fine. But this data, why is it so important for you to have it? What are you going to use it for? 
Now, why would someone be be annoyed or angry that uh, the people you're doing business, like a financial institution, wants to know everything about you? What are you hiding? You have any skeleton on your cupboard or whatever? And let me tell you one thing. Uh, like you said, why are they doing this? You see, they, uh, one of our legal jurists, Professor Lucio, he said that the law is to harmonize with the society. The implication of that, or what that means, is that the law grows alongside with the society. As the society grows, the law grows with the society. As the society improves, the law improves the society. So there are so many things that you see in the society, you need to amend the laws in order to be in tandem with the happenings of the society at that particular point in time. Let me also give you an example. In 2019, after the 2019 presidential election, I was a vice presidential candidate in that election. And after the election, I think about three or four months after the election, I went to U.S. Embassy uh, for an interview. And when I went for the interview, uh, surprisingly, I was confronted by the, the interviewer that, ah, you actually contested for, uh, you were vice presidential candidate in 2019. I was. I started smiling. I said yes. But how did he get to know that? They had. They had got into my 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 Facebook page. They have got into my social handle and all that, and got all those things. And and that is what embassies do. So why is it that Nigerians or people will not ask them why you are invading on on my on my privacy? Or my fundamental human rights. So let us forget about all these things. Anyone that is genuine should be able to give full details of yourself full account of yourself, and everything concerning you. Look at what we're talking about today. We're talking about, um, uh, uh, you know, even trying to prohibit social media and all that, because of what people are doing. Today, people will go and search for people's nude pictures, post them every, post them. But with all these things, you can be able to follow those people and all the rest. So for me, I don't see anything bad. In fact, I do not see it as a violation of anybody's human rights. If you're not ready... To, 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 to do business with any bank. Then keep your information to yourself. That's what I'm concerned. Because these things are to checkmate so many things about individuals. So many people will come out. Even nowadays, people answer fake names. Go to uh, 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 the Nigerian immigrations today. You see, and that is why the, the immigration services have made it difficult now for you to change your name, your existing name in the passport or age. Because people now come with fake names. Fake names and fake uh, 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 date of birth. That is why, before for you to change it now, there is a procedure, a very cumbersome procedure for you to do all those. So a lot of things are happening in this country on daily basis. So for me, I do not see it as a, as a violation. Hmm. So I'm just wondering for people who are not, you know, on social media, because I have a couple of friends who are not on social media at all. Mm -hmm. What does this mean for them? Does it mean I cannot register or I cannot apply to be a bank customer if I do not have an online presence? I'm just wondering, the women in the, in the, in the villages, the children, the, the men, the people in general in the villages that probably do not have social media, what does this mean for them? What if I am not on social media? How is this um, a policy going to be imposed on people and how do you even get that data that you're searching for, especially when you know that it's not everyone who's on social media? No, I, I'm not sure, you know. Um, in every general, there's always an exception. I'm not sure that that, that section of the law may uh, uh, also make provision for people who are not on uh, social media. The truth is that it's not everybody, even the law recognizes the fact, even the government recognizes the fact that not even the bank recognizes the fact that not everybody is on social media. Mm -hmm. I don't think that law applies to people who are not on social media. But you, you remember, anybody that is uh, on internet banking definitely will be on social media. And I believe that law will be particular on people who are using internet banking and all the rest. So there are people who are not, there are people who are not on Facebook. There are people who are not on Twitter. There are people who are, but you will still know. By the time, like for example, if I search you on Facebook now and I did not see you, the implication is that you're not on Facebook. Even on WhatsApp, if you see anybody that is not using WhatsApp, once you go to WhatsApp to try and upload that person, the WhatsApp will even uh, notify you that this person is not on WhatsApp. So for me, that one is not an issue. 
There are people here who are not on social media, who doesn't use social media handle and all the right, Twitter, um, them, them, and all the right. So I don't think the law will also apply to them. But it's for you, actually, to, to verify and to give uh, credence that, yes, I'm not on social media. I don't have any social media handle or thereabouts. Mm. I'm just um, another question I have is um, privacy and security, you know, of this data being collected. Because if someone is, t you know, taking my social media handle, um, I'm wondering how the government is going to ensure that it's, it's still kept private. You, you're not just splurging it out, and anybody can just see. So obviously, my account manager will be able to see that. Um, and maybe the people in the bank. But what if they take that data? They start to follow me. Some people start to stalk me from there. Know what my daily activity is. So I'm just a bit concerned about the privacy of all of this. Do people go about posting their daily activities? Most on Most people do, and especially and people I, who are Gen Z. No, no, I, I understand. But, but for me, the answer is no. And somebody like me now, you don't expect me to be posting my daily activities on social media. It's only some people who who have taken social media to be their second home or even their first home. As far as some I'm people, concerned. some people so even work me, through social media. Some people, that is their no, content no, it's, creators. It's like, that is their I, day's I, job. I know, I, I know, I know that uh, people walk through social media and all the rest. But yeah. see, people that are walking through social media, they also have their their, their private code they used to work and all that. And let us also tell ourselves the truth. You see, we are talking about fraud. We are talking about security. When you even talk about security, it really help to secure the customers personally. You see, if you have, and again, you remember that everybody that is working in the bank, there's always this presumption of Berima Fide. That is the uh, utmost good faith by people who are uh, working on social media, uh, who are working on a financial, inst uh, financial institutions or banks. So I think the banks also themselves will look at a way in order to self guide its workers and to make sure that all things are done equal. But for me, anybody that has problem with uh, releasing his social media, uh, uh, you know, contacts or information to me, that person has something to hide. We were talking about social media. So what are we even talking about social media? And is it not about uh, Facebook? Is it not about email? Is it not about Twitter? Is it not about uh, TikTok? And name them. Uh, what, what again is is someone hiding? If somebody knows he's genuine and is not doing any any bad thing or any wrong thing, then why should he be afraid? Mm. Well, some people, some people don't want all of their business being known by you know people in the banks and. I think I, I can I can understand that because if I am on you know one of these um, social media sites, I probably want to post my daily activities, and I don't want you to really know my daily activities. But that's by the way. Let's talk about it from the government um, the government point of view. I'm wondering what you know how they're going to use this data to even curb insecurity because if you if you want to know more about a person and since this is like a know your customer policy if you want to know more about that customer i'm sure there must be a reason and one of those reasons are like it's just to make sure we're curbing insecurity so how is the government going to use this because if you're seeing this person splurging online um you know just doing something some form of Ill illegal activity obviously you already know that you can bring them to books right but how can the government now curb insecurity in nigeria because that is a major issue here and that's the reason why we're not even seeing you know people come to nigeria as much um because of the insecurity issue so how is the government going to curb insecurity with this because if you're getting data Obviously, the data must be used for something. And I want to believe one of the ways to use this data is to curb insecurity. Just as we wrap it up. Well, the, well, the truth is that you know that um, when, you, when you're on social media and you have social media accounts, uh, name them, definitely you can be checkmated. People can know your itinerary. People can know your activity. Like you rightly say, the kind of things you post and mm. all the rest. And I believe also that one of these, uh, one of the major reasons why uh, these policies or laws are coming up because of uh, uh, fraudulent activities, especially from people. Who, in fact, there are so many people who are in Nigeria today, who they live in Nigeria, but they use phone numbers, coded phone numbers, as if they are in US, as if they are in London, mm -hmm. as if they are in Canada, and all the rest. And people will not know. 
and they fake all these things. So for me, it, it will save Nigeria a lot. If my problem is that can they uphold this? Can mm. it work? Or is he just making the laws and not following it up? It's not about the federal government. It's about the branch now. Yeah. And I believe the federal government will know what to do by uh, maybe trying to attach security agents like EFCC and other agencies to every bank to monitor some of these things. And other. It's not only here that these things are. Why do, if you go to Western world, why do they arrest uh, uh, people that commit fraud, people that commit crime easily? It's because of their access to social media handle of people. Abroad, there's nothing, and that is why every every person living abroad has what they call security number. Yeah. With that security number, you can be checked. You can you can be arrested if you leave America today. If you commit a crime now and leave America this second to another country, they are following you because of your social media handle. So introducing it here for me is, is not a bad thing. We're trying we're trying to save ourselves, save the country, and save. It save everybody in this country. Mm. My problem is just like is like I say, will it not be politicized? Mm. It, it, you see, I keep on saying that my problem most time is lack of sincerity of purpose. For me, it's a good one. It's a good law, but you will have sincerity of purpose to follow it up. Another thing that I think that you know, if I'm thinking of the bottlenecks or the problems, I'm just wondering if people know about this. What if they start to decide not to post their daily lives on social media, and then you know the effort is being defeated because if someone who's into fraudulent activity, they probably would not put that in your face, knowing that you're checkmating them. So I think they should, aside, you know, getting the social media handles, there should also be other measures to checkmate this because human beings are funny and they would always devise other means to be able to do whatever they yes, want to they, do. Yes, they will all, they'll always do for another means. But let me tell you the truth. The moment they, they stop, especially the front stars stop, it is already bringing down their escapades. Mm. Because that is the major ways they do all this thing, they defraud people and so many things. All this issue of cloning, doing a lot of things on social media and all the rest. The moment you are able to go into people's uh, social handle media, you see that all this fraud will, 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 will be minimized. Well, they will look for hopefully. another means. Yeah. Because the only way, the only way they can do some of these things is by all this fake life. Let me also shock you. I believe you know. Because I know you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Are you aware? I will stay here to tell you that ninety percent of people using Facebook are fake. They don't mm -hmm. put their real name. Most times they don't put their real pictures. Somebody will be living in Nigeria. He will tell you he's, in, he's living <laughs> in US. He's living in, in London. No, no. Let me let me release it to ourselves. Let right, ourselves yeah. the truth. That is some of the problems we are. Well, we, we just hope that right. we just so, like I said. I mean, I'm just hoping that the government is looking for you know, sustainable means to be able to curb all of this, all of the fraudulent activities. And like, and like you rightly that, said, that the purpose. Yeah. The, the, the sincerity of purpose. Yeah, the sincerity of the, the, the government is sincere on this thing, it, mm. it is good to fly. So anybody Hopefully. that uh, is not, is not uh, happy or cannot do it, then stop any transaction with bank. Because even All if right. you are abroad, mm. you do anything, you want to send money, it is also through bank that you will send it. So True. for me, like I said, no, 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 no right is absolute. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. This is where we have to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for coming. It's always a, you know, it's always a lovely conversation. I love the banter and how we go back and forth. It's always nice. Thank you so much, Justice. Thank you very much. All right. We're well, speaking with Justice Uwegbe, he's a human rights lawyer who's joining us from Abuja. And we're just talking about you know, the, the ruling of the courts asking for your social media handles for bank customers. This is where we have to wrap it up on the show today. It's been lovely having a breakfast with you as always. My name is Romet Paulson. I'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend. Bye.